Hello everyone. Um, I've done some revisions on the coil winding machine. Um, I've uh, redone the center part here and uh, taken care of redoing some switches. And then I also uh, have changed the foot counter on it. If you remember, our foot counter did not look like this before. It was this little unit here. And I went ahead and got rid of this and we no longer need this. So if you have one of these, you can go ahead and use it. Um, you can find these for as cheap as $9, so they're not really too expensive. But uh, I want to do a little bit different unit. And so I used the pedometer, as you can see here, and I've wired it in through a reed switch that goes here. And then if you'll notice here, there are some holes that are drilled. And those holes actually hold the magnet. Now I can take this off here so that I can show you the magnet. And all it is is just a little Neo that's just pressed right in. Now what I do, I'm not sure if you can see it really well, but uh, I actually drill a small hole in the back for two reasons. One, it lets the air out. And two, if I ever have to pop the magnet out, it gives me a, a way so I can pop that magnet back out. So if I want to redo the, the settings on that. So that's, that's that part. And that just slides on there just like that. So it's got a confirmed lock. Now if you look at the pedometer, you'll see that it's at zero. This right here, if you'll remember on the other video that I did, this is for my manual counter. So you can see I can count it up if I need to. This is the reset switch. And you just push it until it resets. And then you'll notice on the side here, it's pretty much all the same as what we had before. This is my cooling fan here. Blows cool air across all of our electronics on our motor to keep it cool. Um, and that's, uh, that's what that is. Now I've also changed the mechanism here for how I actually hold my coils on. This is actually all steel now. And it was PVC before. And when you're winding a lot of coils and things, the PVC can, uh, can get loose and things like that. So I went ahead and changed this to steel. It's just a couple of nuts that have been welded together and then fitted and then uh, re-threaded on the back side to accept the uh, windshield wiper motor. Okay, so inside of here, you can see this other bolt that's sticking out on the inside. That is a spacer. And what that does is that makes it so when the spool comes up against here, because of where I have my wires coming out, I don't want my wires to get crimped or marred or scratched. So this stop actually engages on the core material that I'm using, and it engages and creates a little space in between this nut right here and the actual spool itself. So there's a little gap, just enough for those wires so that they don't get crimped. And then it locks down on the inside of that nut. Just something to kind of think about and, uh, and plan for when you're doing it, just to make sure you don't mar up any wires or anything. And what that is, and then there's the three retaining bolts that hold it through that you can see through the, the disc here. So what I want to show you first of all is how the counter works. Now every time that the magnet passes by the read switch, then it's going to change our pedometer reading here. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And you'll see that the magnet passed, and so there's one. And there's two. And it works very, very well. It doesn't have any miscounts, any miscalculations. I've been running it for a while just to verify that it's going to work. I took it up to like 500 turns, or 500 feet and uh, it was still it was still going just fine so um, what this is is it's a one to four ratio basically is how this is set up so when this reads four it's actually one foot of wire and I'm going to show you how I do that wire okay so what I did was I went ahead and I threaded in a bolt and a nut and this is just going to show you our wire now this wire here symbolizes one foot, so it's one foot long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset our pedometer back to zero. And I'm going to set it so that this one magnet is at the top. So I'm going to wait until it comes to the top. And then you'll notice on the pedometer that it's a one now. I'm going to turn this just a little bit so you can see that a little better. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is reset this again. And then I'm going to take our wire and tighten it in here 
to the top of our bolt. Okay, so there you go. So basically we just attached our... Okay, so I'm going to give this a run here. So you'll see that the pedometer is set at 4 right now, which would mean that there was already one foot on there. With the speed of the motor, that's about how fast I turn when I'm making my coils anyway. And so you'll see here as this comes back up for its final pass, as soon as it's there, and that would be the bottom right there. So where it started and where it stops is exactly a foot long. So that helps to, to do that. Um, it says 8 on the pedometer because it's a 1 to 4 again. And I uh, hope that you've enjoyed this video. The pedometer is really nice to use for this. gives you a really accurate reading. And the reason why I did a 1 to 4, you could actually make this a 1 to 1. The reason why I made it a 1 to 4 was because that gives me a fraction point for when I did the, the coil. So say that it was 9 instead of 10, or say it was 3 instead of 4. Well, that is a fraction of how long that foot is. So having a 1 to 4 makes the fractions really simple for how many feet that you have on your finished spool. So what I'm going to show you here, I'm just going to take this off and unthread this. Now, our spools that I make are threaded on the end, as you've seen that before. So I'm using a different type of core material. And the beautiful thing about having a reverse switch is using the reverse switch, you can actually thread your spool right on and get your wire set spin it right on and then when this comes into contact I'll turn it off so that you can see that little space that I was talking about okay right there is just where it's tight now you notice that there is a space in between the drive nut and the outside of our coil and that's so that the wires will have a space to sit there so that uh, they don't get crimped or marred. And then of course we have our wires coming through our tension block coming over to our new spool. And this is going to be the next spool that I'm going to be turning. I'm just going to slide the camera over just a little bit so you can see that. And that's going to be the new spool and everything that uh, that's made. And this is going to be the next coil that we're going to be testing. It's uh, about three times the size of the one that we had been testing so we should be getting some good results from that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video series. Thank you.